coming up. Uh, men in dresses, bearded women. Would you say that it's kind of common? Yeah, you'd like it. It's like Jersey, huh? At what point do you realize that the book is not total fucking shit? <laughs> I mean, do you feel guilty when you're banging a fan? 12 good reviews and then one bad one. That's Who's giving you a bad review? Who oh, was his fucking I name? <laughs> Jerry Halliwell's is proper dog shit. There's that old cliche we've all got a book in it. No, you fucking don't. I've got you some gifts. We got you some host and pills. I got you. I, Beautiful. I got you a Scott Jack here. <laughs> if you're interested in some hash browns, I know you guys like potatoes. <laughs> I know you're middle class now, John. So we got you good eating <laughs> chips. Unbelievable guest today. Unbelievable guest. If you haven't read any of his books, well, you fucking should because they are nasty. Yeah. Right? If you like bile, male, vengeful, nastiness, John is your man. But meeting John, lovely fella. I've watched <laughs> interviews with him. I've seen him. I've watched clips of him doing his book tour. Lovely lad, liberal, open-hearted, a, a, a ladies' man. But you read his fucking books, you'd think he was the nastiest cunt on earth. <laughs> John, is there? A, I mean, your new book, Oh Brother, quite a departure mm. from your previous work. First of all, it's autobiographical, mm -hmm. and Gone is the nasty, and now we're sort of into the sort of deep. Pathos. It's an incredibly moving book, John. Thank you. Was it? Did you miss being a bit nasty when you were writing this? Did you? Did you want to just lash out and say some horrible shit? <laughs> no, because I knew, and you would get back to it in the next book, which I'm doing right now. Right. Which features a Scottish gangster. Um, it's a very moving book. I must say, I was reading it, and I particularly enjoyed your early years when you when you're talking about school back in Scotland. I was amazed to discover there are schools in Scotland. <laughs> It's a, it's news yeah, to me. So, I thought it was kind of a tribal thing, yeah, communicating it, rhythmically, and, yeah, and yeah. it's still acknowledged through the village elders over there. <laughs> There's still plenty of that goes on, yeah, but we do have a few schools, yeah. <laughs> oh, certainly yeah. not. And I love the uh, terms of phrase you use in the book. You're very good, very lyrical. One thing I particularly like, massive graga riding your coupon. <laughs> it's a lovely phrase. I, I, I got similar stuff myself. I like to say, coax out a live one, which is referring to discharging a weapon or urgently need in the bathroom <laughs> so i really i really like how you use words yeah gr grogger and the coupon spit spit the spit spit in the face for english listeners yeah. right. pauper's bliss that's right it refers Stealing to whacking off. Yeah. with a with a catcher's mitt unfortunately i can't claim that one that's actually vladimir uh, nabokov you're you know, a bad you would it. you say you're a bad boy of writing Bad boy, uh, uh, wow! I'm fucking old now, but I suppose I still get that. But it's funny you get uh, some interview in the book so referred to me as a uh, one font Turlib one night. Oh, yeah. I was like, I'm like, well, hang on a fucking minute! I'm mm. not, not going to see fifty again at this point. I think the on font is out the window. I think for a lot of people, you sort of get frozen in time at the point where you broke through. So a lot of people still think mm. of the guy who wrote Kill Your Friends, you know. But that yeah. was, you know, I was thirty six or seven then. I suppose right. you could get away with a bit of the on font. Not, right. not so much now. We got a lot of new bad boys of writing. You know, Owen Jones, he's pretty. <laughs> J.K. Rowling. Dan Brown, of course. It's very edgy it's stuff yeah. he comes right. out with. Huge Famously. Mm. Famously. <laughs> do people meet you and assume you're going to be nasty? Do, are people nervous to meet you, John? Uh, sometimes you get the odds, especially after Twitter became a thing. You would, you know, when you interact with people... I, or more often, actually, they'll tweet you later and say, I, I'm sure I saw you at wherever. And mm. you're like, yeah, I was there. And they'll say, yeah, I was going to come and, you know, introduce myself, but I was too nervous. It's a too form of you'll growl it. Yeah. Fuck off, I've get out of here. Well, you know, don't I've got, even... I guess I've got quite an abrasive Twitter persona and people right, think right. you're going to be like that in life. But, you know, mm. half the time that's when you're replying to some Tory shit house or mm. Republican mm. lunatic. It seems to bring out the, the sort of underbelly of people, doesn't it, Twitter? It's just that's like a bit. lifting a brick and there's a fucking wood A lot of thing. shit under there, yeah. I'm guilty of that myself, yeah. Yeah, I've, I'm not on Twitter. I, it makes me too anxious. I, I don't with that shit. I don't like the cookie shit, if you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't agree with that. You don't live in Scotland currently, is that right? I don't. No, I still, I still have a house there. That's nice. I have a place like, there. I, I've never been. I've, I, I feel like it's quite a progressive place overall, Scott. you got a lot of uh, men in dresses, bearded women. Would you say that it's kind of common? Yeah, you like it. Way? It's like Jersey, you know? You've got you a lot of, a lot, well, yeah, a lot of wasteland, a lot of post-industrial landscapes. Sounds great. Of, yeah, I really, you know, I'm not up to speed with it. I know, a lot of I, I know, factories. 
I, I know about bagpipes though. They they play bagpipes up there. You hear it at a funeral. It's, 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 it's sometimes, you, sometimes you do. Because it's kind of like the audio equivalent of grief in a way. It's right. very like. Yeah, it's a painful sound. So what's it like writing a book, knowing? Because this is a big body of work here. You got there's a lot of words. Mm. What's it like writing a book, knowing? that you're not going to see the reaction of somebody reading it and enjoying it. Because it's not like a song or a joke or when you punch yeah, yeah, a yeah. motherfucker that's, in the face. Because when you hit somebody, you see the instant reaction. Yeah, it's yeah, very satisfying. That's a good question. Look in their eye. Uh, when, when someone's reading the book, you can't see yeah, the book. Yeah. Oh, oh, I uh, mean, uh, yeah, because I write movies too, and obviously when, you, when you're working a movie and you go to see it, you'll see the people reacting in real time mm, to what you've done. Mm, really nice. But with a, with a book, with a novel, you write, you don't see that. What, at what point do you realize that the book is not total fucking shit <laughs> you know what I mean like cause you gotta write it I mean as a writer you've got two voices that are in your head all the time one of them is saying to you that you're just a total fraud and this is dog shit and it's just a matter of time before you get rumbled yeah. and the other voice is saying you're a fucking genius and James mm -hmm. Joyce and you know people like that are looking down at you in awe and why isn't every sentient adult on the planet reading one of your books right now so yeah. you're constantly battling those two voices, you know. You can get 12 good reviews and then one bad one, and it's the fucking it's the bad one. Who's way. giving you a bad review? Who oh, was his God, fucking name? <laughs> Tell us his name, I'll, write it down. I'll, I'll, Ryan Logan got, at The Guardian. i got a list with me here I can furnish Brilliant. you Keep that, that fucking after Ray. Write a book out. about killing your fucking critics. <laughs> we have a laugh at a joke, but when... Uh, when we uh, finish the recording, let me know the critics and because uh, <laughs> I do have some uh, literary context. Right? I know where they fucking go. These are the geezers yeah, who aren't having the life John has, and they and they know they're not. He, he's smashing all the birds in the back of the grout show every fucking night <laughs> off his face on beak. So we said so. A lot of words. And sometimes you got two voices conflicting. Mm. So you never know. Uh, maybe there's a tipping point. You're like, okay, this is good, but maybe have you ever considered maybe writing? If you slim it down, you could write a kids book. Because they only have like 25 fucking words. You could write a Scottish kids book, you know, like Hamish likes skag, Hamish is sad. Mm. It could be popular with the adults too over there. My kids occasionally say to me something like, okay, I think it was Harry Potter or whatever my son was reading at the time years ago. You know, Why don't you write one of these, write a book with this dad? You know, like, like Harry fucking yeah, Potter. Yeah, yeah, I'll just knock one of them out. I'll be, yeah, no problem. We'll, um, we'll all be rich. Harry, <laughs> but, Harry goes off the rails. Yeah, Harry um, goes on the fucking rails. But yeah, I, that's right. But I think now you got a fucking mad culture where if you're famous for like doing TV or whatever, um, publishers will come to you and say, "Will you write a kids book for us?" You don't even have to write. You don't have to write it. Right. We're going to get somebody to write it. Right. You just stick your name on it. Right. And we'll David Williams is going to do it for you. Yeah, or whoever right. you know. And it's get like Quentin Blake to draw yeah. it for you. Yeah, and just Nick Roll Dole's identity. And then and if, and you're we're off, at, right? if you're looking at that area, like uh, if rumors are to be believed, David Williams. Mm. He's on the way out. He, he loves children. Space. That's right. He does. He's, 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 he's going to have an accident. He's, he's not going to have gonna an accident. Digging. He's going to have a reckoning. <laughs> right. On the subject <laughs> of that kind of uh, art, you know, there's there's a whole history of erotica. You know, the sexy word. Mm. Have you ever? Written the have you ever written have you ever read something that gave you a fucking heart on it? <laughs> oh, many a time, yeah. Um, like but, uh, uh, erotic, do you think it's valid? Do you think uh, have you ever read a sexy book? Uh, plenty, yeah, but it's, for most of us, sex scenes are, are not the easiest thing to write, you know. Mm. They, they have awards for that shit every year for the worst sex scene in right. literature, you know. Yeah, you don't want to be, you don't want to be on that list. It's but, very yeah. hard to make a man look good in a sex scene, isn't it? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's as, in, as in life. Him, right, right. <laughs> easy to make him look horrible, isn't it? Some grotesque coming towards the bed with his fucking socks still on. and Yeah. He, he's got his shirt on but no trousers and his fucking hairy arsehole and his fucking... Yeah, it's not ideal. ...free cum dribbling down his leg. <laughs> you don't need to see. He paints quite a picture, don't he? Whereas the woman's on the bed looking luxurious. Always. Easy to make yeah. her. I mean, she's all the work's all done by her, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's, Can I just stop, John? Now, obviously, it's a very isolating job being a, a writer. Now, I, I, I watched uh, Martin Amis, so I know he's a, you're a big fan of his. Yeah. And because um, I would say you're sort of Martin Amis-esque with, with less wanking and more coke and then less long words, so it's more accessible. <laughs> more accessible, Martin Amis, for the 20th century. That's good to hear. He said he likes the sort of confrontational elements of the book tour because he's, it's a nice antidote to the isolation. Do you find that? Do you enjoy the book tour, John? 
Yeah, I do. Um, last one was quite long, with 17 or 18 dates, um, and you find yourself repeating yourself a bit towards mm. the end. But, but yeah, it gets you. The great enemy of the novelist life is solitude sometimes, you know, you just on your own. So doing things like today, coming to meet you, fine lads, doing press or occasional bits of journalism or book tours, it's get, you know, or working in movies because you've got to meet people to do that, you know. Mm. It all gets you out the house a bit. Yeah, yeah did you good. ever get any broads showing up to the book tours? Yeah, oh yeah, the, 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 you know. Hey, the, John, I love that. I love that fucking word you wrote. There's a, there's a see me at the bar. <laughs> we definitely have a female element to our audience, <laughs> especially in this book. Actually, that's opened that up much more. Oh, yeah, because it's emotional. They're yeah. vulnerable. That's yeah, how they you like believe. that, don't they? Taps into that maternal, <laughs> horny <laughs> matriarch. <laughs> uh, what is your average group? I'm going to sort of try and imagine. I want to say sort of thirties, sort of with a sort of melancholy. Sort of uh, kind I, of subtle promiscuity, I, but out, uh, away from her normal I, town. I think it would be making too much of an assumption to say I had an average groupy type. Right, so, you, I mean, do you feel guilty when you're banging a fan? <laughs> is the power balance a bit of a turn off, or does it get you going? <laughs> well, it's been a long time, like I said, you know. You have to reach back good good, good wealth to, um, to remember those days. Right, you've left your life, have you? Wish, left out of life. Wishful, wishful. Mm. <laughs> Let me ask you this, comic books... Are they for fucking virgin losers, or do you think they have been? I don't really do comic books. I don't you mean like a like a, a graphic novel? Is that graphic novel, novel? Fucking yeah. Marvel, you know. But a lot of these kids, they 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 read a Spider Man. Next thing you know, they're at a fucking furry convention. You know, yeah. Yeah. that's a slippery slope. But they are well, uh, many of drug. our top tier patrons. So thank you for supporting the pod. Now much appreciated. Thank you. Give us <laughs> give us your comic <laughs> recommendations if you read anything from the Marvel verse. We'd love to hear about it. <laughs> thank you, Mickey Mouse three thousand. That's a lovely comment, and thank you for your donation. Now. <laughs> Um, now, obviously, we, there's a lot of music in here because you worked in the music industry, John. You worked in A and R. There's lovely segments about the Clash, going to see the Clash near where you grew up in Ayrshire. Yeah, and and obviously here in the Human League, and that being yeah. the nickname of your brother, Gary. Yeah, yeah. Shades from that song from Dare. Yeah, yeah. And I've, I read that, and obviously Human League, that seminal album, Dare. That album was on when my first born was conceived. There you go. And the sound of the crowd was the song I got to. You're joking. A track free. <laughs> you go, by the way, I, some congratulations are in order. Oh, that's yeah. right. No, I am ex- I've I've had another baby. Oh, congratulations, uh, Ray. For the love of fuck, do not tell Elaine, my wife, because <laughs> she don't know yet. <laughs> It's, it's, it's ugly. It's not going to go in the pod, obviously. We can talk We're going to edit this out, right? Yeah. But, oh, yeah, me brass. <laughs> she fucking stopped taking the pill. She went away. Just vanished for a year. I was seeing another brass. That's another fucking story. Got syphilis and all the rest. <laughs> fucking pubic lice. We've been there. She come back, new lips and a fucking baby. And she says it's mine. And I'm and I'm saying, no, it ain't. It can't be. It can't be. And then you hear the fucking thing cry. It, yeah. it cries in my accent. Wee. <laughs> Wee. It's definitely mine. Tough, tough break. <laughs> so I'm having to fucking pay her off to keep her silent. No, but you're happy about it. So nice. Oh, yeah, obviously I'm happy to be a dad again, it's, but it's it, complicated. It's going to be diverse. It's half Asian. So I mean, it's, a right. nice, it's a nice step in the right direction for you. That's right. right. I'm trying to diversify. I'm trying to be a better man. It's like the portfolio of your kids is now. <laughs> That's it's, right. You could get more work. Expanded. That. That's yeah. right. That's right. I mean, I've got three girls, as you know. You've got four kids, is that right? Mm-hmm. Two two wives? Uh, well, three. Three wives. Yeah, technically? Yeah. What do you mean by that? Bigger me. Well, uh, I've only been married twice, but three, one was a sort of long-term partner. So you've got grown-up kids in their yeah. mid-20s? Yeah, Robin would be mid 20s, to late 20s? 27, yeah. 27. Yeah. Lovely, some beautiful scenes with Robin. I mean, the scene where you leave your wife and kid, that is absolutely shattering. But that's the nature of addiction. That's the nature of chasing the thrill when you're 20. Yeah. It's cost, isn't it, John? Not well behaved back at that point in time, safe mm. to say. Not um, suited for fatherhood the first time. I mean, it took me a few years to kind of get my head around that. But, you know, I was still in my 20s, as you say. It's too young. It was for me. Some some guys it's not, I guess, you know. Yeah. But, oh. um, no, it was, I was a bit older before I was kind of match fit. It's, a, it's, a, it's important to share that, and obviously you say in the, in the beginning you got that quote about, you know, I don't know who it was from, the uh, it's only to be trusted when it reveals something disgraceful. A man who gives a good account of himself is probably lying. Yeah. And I feel like you have tried to admit to those humiliations, those disgraceful behaviours. Yeah. I'm wondering, when did you start getting your, because revenge is a big part of your work. All of your books for me, except this one, mm. seem to be about a reckoning, a revenge, yeah. a nasty moment, a coming together, a convergence of all of the moments. Yeah. This cunt's going to yeah. get it. When did you start 
feeling that revenge building? When did you start thinking, I'm going to get these cunts one day? <laughs> I think, well, Elvis Costello said something like, um, the only emotions he understands in his songwriting are guilt and revenge. Right. And I think when I was a younger man, um, a lot of the early books you're talking about, um, a lot of them came from somebody who kind of wasn't happy with his place in the world and wanted to get to somewhere else. So the the emotions that are kind of accessible to you there are kind of rage and envy and revenge, all those kind of do you emotions, think? You know? Do you think if you suddenly got all the fucking praise in the world, all the appeal of uh, J.K. Rowling, the Nazi, <sighs> you'd be able to write something of as co- the same level of quality? Is what you already do. Do you think if you got all the fame and success and money in the world? Well, I don't know. It might be different. I mean, they say happiness writes white, don't they? It doesn't show up on the page. So mm. the darker emotions kind of are more um, communicable, transmittable. I don't know. I mean, I can't even. You kind of ask me what might it be like to be someone else. You know. Yeah. Well, you're basically you've got those two voices on your shoulders. The one that tells you you're Jesus. The other one that tells you you're a fraud. And obviously, if one if the one that tells you you're a fraud fucks off, you're in trouble. <laughs> if they're both fucking on your shoulders saying you are God, yeah. then you you won't write. Right. <laughs> you will, you'll have nothing to prove. You're Wait. right. You're right. But it uh, it will be garbage. It will be garbage. Point. It'll be middle of the road. It'll be sort yeah. of but nuts. it won't even matter because people will buy it. And then yeah, I mean, maybe if I don't know if you sell enough books. Maybe you, and I mean, I know writers who I went. Name sell a lot more books than me, but and we're all kind of still driven by the same insecurities. I think, yeah, and no, maybe the bit. I think here's the thing, right? I think with writers, it tend you tend to be a bit older before success comes your mm. way. No, n- there's not many novelists do much of worthwhile under the age of thirty. So you kind of you kind of are who you are by that point. Right, with right. musicians, I think they often get great success in their late teens or early twenties, mm. and you've kind of not quite figured out who you are at that age. So yeah. I think that kind of it's different dynamic than that than to be a novelist, you know. How do you keep yourself uncomfortable, John? I mean, you say, is it is it in natural default state you say for all writers, or do you have to sort of make yourself agitated, have a few special brews, a bad night's sleep to start typing, or <laughs> how do you keep yourself a bit a bit angry, a bit gnarly? No, I don't know. I, just, I mean, I know it's funny you mentioned this. I was talking about this with dinner with my wife the other night. Um, there's a thing where I, yeah, I go through phases with drinking. Sometimes I go like a three month period not drinking at all, and it's great because you're up really early in the morning, you're bright as a button, and all that shit. But the downside is sometimes at night, the first couple of drinks are in sort of five, six o'clock in the evening. Mm. I find often they, they free up your subconscious, you know, because mm. we're right what you're trying to do is you kind of try to get out of the way yourself to access that subconscious part of you. Mm-hmm. And the, I often find if I'm stuck in a plot point or a, you know, a logic thing, a couple of drinks in the evening, I'll suddenly have an idea. So this is what happened. I had a couple of glasses of wine. Right. I, was, I went, you know, excuse me, when I, had to, I went to the study for sort of 20 minutes, just made a few notes, because it helps you get to that place. Yeah, um, That actually rings true to me, because I sometimes need a couple of scotches or get my joint cup at the bing before I get down to business. It does certainly help. It loosens the mind when you gotta it's take the flow going. Well you gotta take a fuck around. <laughs> yeah, not what is it like to uh, create characters? You think characters can say the unsayable or yeah, words that's a big, literal violence. That's a big part of the appeal of it, definitely. It's fun to be able to like I got a character Stephen Stellfox, who was the the weed character in Kill Your Friends and then 10 years later, another novel called Kill Em All. That's right. And then I'm Brilliant. planning and in a few years' time to do a third book. Of, oh. If I'm spared, you know? Where's that um, going to be set? North Korea? Uh, kill, kill the no, world? No, it's going to be here. It's going to be, he's moving into politics. Oh, of course he is. Yes, yeah. Jesus Christ, is that I'm an scared. exclusive? Has that been announced? Yeah, no, it hasn't been. You've got an exclusive mm. here, my friend. Holy so, um, shit. Yeah. Uh, he's still Fox. British so, politics? But yeah, British politics. Oh, lovely. I've got the memoir out now, obviously, and then I've got another, my next novel's going to be 2025, so yeah. be the one you, after You're that. on that at the moment. I'm, I'm on the second draft of that, yeah, I should right. be finishing that. That's an interesting break. question about timings between novels, because sometimes people, they'll only write one fuck a novel that's good mm. with a 30 year gap between Joseph mm. Heller mm. I don't know well the that? Americans ten, yeah Donna Tart Secret History and then there was right. you know 10 years till the next book and, and do you think it, do you think that that's unique to writing that it takes time or do you think you could just bang them out I cannot well there's two schools of thought in that I mean like Stephen King famously said about you know because he works on a genre area he'd write a book every year or two for a long time, and he said of people at Donatar, he, he said, I just wonder what you do with your time. How it can take you 10 years to, to write a 
a novel. Mm. I kind of, you know, I'm in between two. I'm, I'm not a genre novelist. I'm not a super literary novelist. So I'm maybe every two years, book two to three. Oh, now it's a bit a bit. Well, Louis C.K., the comedian, he famously changed the game because he would force himself to release an hour of comedy <laughs> every year. And uh, obviously pre-wank beast. But then when that <laughs> happened, you know, when he got caught whacking off in front of the women, that took a departure and then it was yeah. a show. But comedy world is very similar people put out one yeah. year yeah 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 right. writing's very different though it takes I time think you see that with musicians you were saying about bands when they come out the first album or two it's kind of got that scratchy restless quality as they're trying to find out who they are and they got all that shit they got to get off their chest mm. and that can have a very delicious quality and then when they find out what they think the audience want and they do that that's when it yeah and how, yeah. do you fall, how do you stop yourself falling into self-parody? Well, they used to say, of course, didn't they, that you your whole life to write your first album, but you only had 18 months maybe to write the second one. Right, right? and you become more of a composer rather than a poet in that moment. Well, the problem I, it, with art is, uh, as you, you know, this is my 11th book, I'm currently writing the 12th, um, you learn certain technical things, you know, the kind of the craftsman side of it, I suppose, gets more accomplished. So yeah. the first one is really is breaking the duck, and it's very important. It's like getting on telly when I, when I played Second Youth on the Sweeney in 77. <laughs> that broke my duck. And then I knew I, I'm, I've got a foot in the door here. And then, you know, weren't you in that show, Birds of a Feather? I was. The 80s weren't good for me. I'd, I'd rather not talk about it. It was yeah. a, a, oh, I, 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 scum. It, well, that was 78, 79. But oh, right, I mean, sorry, that would be the same and Robin of Sherwood. I, fuck I like that. Will like Scarlet, and I was, pet. you know, I was in Birds of a Feather, same pet. I mean, it, just as I was drifting into self parody, Gary Oldman comes and fucking saves the day with Neil Barmouth. And yeah. then people started taking me seriously. But you've got to get your foot in the door. Yeah, yeah. And then people, and then you know you can do it. It's a real fucking, it's a labour of love doing a book. Let me ask you this. You get a lot of knockbacks as a writer, as a creative person. Would you say the knockbacks you got were necessary to get you to that first book that was a success? Are you glad of the pain now? That kind of, well, with this book, I moved publishers um, for the first time. I was with Random House for 15 years. And it was just time for a change for various reasons. But, um... You know, we got we, we got three or four offers from new publishers quite quickly, but we got a few, it was even now at my stage of the game, and I've been doing this a while, quite well established, we still got a couple of knockbacks. And so when this book came out and started doing pretty well, you know, yeah. it gives you a pleasure thinking Absolutely of people who right. not, you know, mm. you never lose that it's revenge, edge, you know, yeah, it's, again, yeah, you're back to that, aren't you? you never, it's nice oh, to be driven by revenge sometimes. <laughs> it's a powerful energy. <laughs> I think so. You know, so, yeah. sh sh let your success... Make you feel fucking miserable, you fucking muck. How could you ever fucking yeah, well, it's, me? it's not generally regarded as a great quote. I love that guy. He's so vengeful. It's not... mm, well, it depends who you hang out with. I feel like, I've, I do feel like underneath it all, everyone's baseline voice in their head is, look at these fucking cunts. I, I, think, I so. think that's what everyone's thinking all the fucking time as they're walking along. So. Some people are better at hiding it and put up little stickers on their fucking windows so how caring they are, but we're all fucking walking along going, look at these fucking... Incredible. I, I actually heard... Is, is this, I don't know if this is true. Are you one of the founders of the Groucho Club? Is that right? No, no, that's not true. No, I was a founder member at Soho House wow. um, oh, in 95, I think that was, yeah. I'd, I'd like to get involved in that. I know about like uh, the Groucho, uh, what was it, uh, Jonathan Creek, he bit the ear of a homeless man out front of there. Did you ever see anything interesting at Soho House in the early days? Maybe uh, John Leslie. Yeah, I was usually I was usually at the centre of it. <laughs> oh, really? You're biting homeless people now? No, 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 not with the homeless. Um, but yeah, there was. it used to be, yeah. That was um, a bit more freewheeling than it is now. But yeah, yeah. Very sanitised now. A bit more corporate now. A lot of fucking these, dipshits you know. on a laptop. But yeah, well, they banned them now in a lot of the, a lot of the sewer houses. They banned them in a lot of the areas, you know. But they, haven't, they haven't banned the uh, marching powder. No, that's fine. <laughs> you can't go online, but you can fucking put a line up your fucking pipe. <laughs> I mean, I've heard uh, this, it's incredible architecture in the Soho houses currently because they really design it with uh, flat surfaces in mind for optimum mm. cocaine yeah, use because that's their key, you know, income. It's the market. That's the key demographic. Is it a good time to be a writer? I think I word this carefully. You don't you have know, to worry the, about that. Don't word it carefully. <laughs> Uncareful. No, we want it. Guy, certainly when it comes to things like awards and stuff, the let's be frank, the era of the sort of straight, white, middle-aged male winning a lot of these things is sort of yeah. past. And, you know, part of me thinks, fair enough, we did have a good run. 
And then again, I, I am I, I am still capable of having a bit of a fucking hell, you know. You know they, were, you, they were great you days. Get, let's, you you know, let's appreciate Those it. days aren't done. That's bollocks. That's what they want us to think. <laughs> yeah, they're, done, they're not done for you. you but you're established. But, you know, I've enjoyed my privilege. It's been fantastic. So hey, uh, it is the young people I feel for, you know. I mean, uh, so, I mean, obviously that, that quality, we all have a nemesis. Brendan Gleeson's mine. Who's who's your nemesis? Who when they turn up on TV, you just go fucking cunt. <laughs> who's getting away with it? <laughs> who's got, who's 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 a nepo baby or who's who's a complete anomaly to you, John? Who do you go? What the fuck? How the fuck have they been allowed in? He's very stoic. He doesn't give nothing away. No, he's good in court. Yeah, no, I, we you should know, talk I, after. I, you, I you, gotta, you know, I gotta bump into people. You know, be, mm. be, 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 being vicious about it. It's like a young man, young man's voice. Would you, you put it in your book? You, you ever insulted somebody? In a text or an article or whatever the fuck, and actually uh, met them Ooh. once. Yeah, who was that? Uh, I don't know if you remember the band Hue and Cry. Oh yeah, but the singer was called Pat Kane. One and uh, when I was writing for the university newspaper, I gave them quite a bad review, and um, he had harsh words for me on the stairs of the university. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> what did he just, fucking say? To I, that? <laughs> yeah, just something like Get his name. Down. That was outrageous. There'll be. I should sue you, something, something like that. But it's yeah. funny getting angry about a review, really, in person, because it's just one guy's fucking opinion. Yeah, yeah. I, if, you you, know, if you respond in that way, it shows that it's got to you. you know? the, the best thing on that was Kingsley Lemus said that a bad review might spoil your breakfast. It shouldn't spoil your lunch. Oh, you know? Kingsley. Nice. Lovely. Yeah. What biographies do you recommend? Because I like reading bad biographies, actually. Cause I read uh, Dale well, Winton. Because well. <laughs> the, the, the climax of the book is... Him after all the trials and tribulations, <laughs> getting that job, supermarket sweep, mm. and you think, well, to me, I was, you know, I'd, I'd be watching that, or they pipe it over to Jersey. I'd be watching it, think, what the fuck is this shit? But to him, that was everything. <laughs> mm. And it's interesting to get a different perspective of life. Yeah. In the context, you know, you can read about a fucking astronaut, and of course, that's impressive. You went to the moon, but Dale, <laughs> he had to overcome so much. Hospital radio, whatever the fuck. What celebrity biographies have I read that are good dog shit? Oh, God, too many. Jerry Halliwell's is proper dog shit. It's hard to write about music, isn't it? Because it's so personal. Well, some of them I think, why don't you just pay a, pay a, get a, get a ghostwriter to do it? Get mm. it some of them have a go at doing it. There's that old cliche, we've all got a book in us. No, you fucking don't. You don't Fuck think off. so? No. You don't think so? No. no. <laughs> well, maybe you, maybe you do, but that's probably where it should stay. What so about a book? Is. What about a book that's horse shit? It's still a book. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, yeah, okay. Right, um, I mean, yeah, we can all put some words on a page. That's what, well, that's what... I love it's about structure. Um, I'm kind of theme for structure, and like, I get sent these books and you're reading it thinking this is just a list of everything that happened to you mm. from when you were born mm. until you finished typing the last sentence hey, it's indulgence steve jobs that biography i read that very good and Never. by all accounts the guy was a fucking asshole but he delivered he delivered an ipod he did so it's like uh the story and you know he he was well he was a wealthy guy he lived in a uh barely furnished place his apartment looked like shit his apartment looked like shit he dressed like shit well, he didn't want to get choice fatigue, did he? So he didn't change his clothes. That's right. That was yeah. part of the business model. Einstein, same. Did he do that? Yeah, yeah. We, well, he, he just kept them four of the same outfit. You know, right. Same trousers, same shirt. Same Saves shirt, time, you know. frees you up. What about you? Do you ever, maybe you could do a kilt? Uh, only weddings. That's the thing. I like yeah. the kilt. I can help you identify a douchebag at a wedding. They, <laughs> they appear in the kilt. They're always very jovial, you know. It's it's a good warning system to kilt. Yeah, yeah. I never worn one before. Do you do you have underpants on? Or do you do you have to do a traditional? I, well, do you know what? When I graduated university, my mum and dad offered one of the things they offered as a gift was to buy me a kilt, and I said to get fucked. Yeah. Hey, by the way, John, uh, we like to start rumors on the podcast. I don't know if you got anything you'd like to share, anything at all. <laughs> Ray, you got any rumors for this week? I've got some rumors. Uh, Bob Geldof, Geldof, what's music, Geldof, what's Geldof up to? Well, apparently he's a nonce, and that's why he did live aid. <laughs> to get ahead of the rumours. That's what I like to do in this era of I mean, like fake the, news. Like the Russell Brand sort that's of right. wellness guru. That's shit. right, he was pre preemptive PR. <laughs> the, the original. Yeah, life has been concocted to cover up being a nonce. Well, you do what you got to do. <laughs> he liked what he liked. Yeah. And it's a good, it's a good alibi. And, and we know that nonces are creative, like they, they, yeah, they, yeah, and they're good Fuck, actors. They've they got do. to be good actors, yeah, yeah, to keep yeah. up the pretense. It's an art form. Yeah, look at Michael Jackson, for Christ's sake. Where do you stand on Michael Jackson? Do you listen to Michael Jackson in the car? Hey, I find Jackson problematic because you know, really, so you can't separate that. the art from. Oh, well, you know, again, we're back to the nonsense. You but know, this Michael. is a question that comes up a lot here. You know, can you separate the art, the the art from uh, alleged crimes? You know, like Michael Barrymore. 
Can we still enjoy striking lucky after, after knowing? After Lubbock. After knowing what we're doing in that pool. Does he deserve Lubbock. redemption? Would you work with him? <laughs> I don't think, yeah. Niven and Barrymore co-hosting a new game show in Saudi Arabia? Can't see that eventuality coming to pass. Um, probably not. Not for me. No, so probably you heard it here first. Right. Very more you Barry, Barry, you... it's not happening. It's not happening, Michael. Right. He has You're been in there. touch with the pod. He's looking for work at the moment. <laughs> yeah. he's, yeah. he's looking for a ghostwriter for his autobiography. Would you do that? I think the version of it I'd have to be right, he would never sign off on, you right. know? <laughs> but it's an interesting concept. Um, I think the pool would feature heavily in John's version of Barry Moore's autobiography. I think we're, we're opening there. It would open in the yeah. pool. I think yeah. the, uh, pool, the pool would be featured in every... Chapter, yeah. Well, and we'd yeah. end in the pool. We'd end with the uh, the 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 anal it's examination. Four hundred page pool party. With right, Robert. right. Well, Barrymore wasn't there. <laughs> he hosted no, the no, party, yeah. but he wasn't there. Wait, wait, wait. I'm not. I'm not having you slander Barrymore again. Like he, <laughs> he was an innocent man. He did what anybody would do in that situation. He would delete the video evidence and flee from the scene. That to me <laughs> suggests someone that's in a panic but with a good moral code. It was a different time. He was at the height of his fucking fame. Let's not forget. A lot to lose. Exactly right. Mm. Yes, we'll do a quick, quick fire. Kindle or book? Book. MP3 vinyl. Vinyl. Haggis heroin. Haggis. There you go. <laughs> First word you said when you saw Nicholas Holt was in the movie version of your book. Great. Interesting. Kenny Dalgleish <laughs> or John Leslie? Dalgleish. J.K. Rowling or Adolf Hitler? J.K. <laughs> All the way. There you go. Uh, would you like to have the scotch up? No, no, I'm good. That's very right, okay. All right. Thank John, you. thank you for coming down in your busy schedule. We appreciated you opening up. It's been a blast. And all the best with your next book. And please, please get back to the nastiness. 